Good morning and welcome to the 2021 State of the Municipality Address by our Executive Mayor, Councillor Horatio Hendricks. This is another first for Kogel Municipality as this is the first virtual State of the Municipality Address. And for the first time ever, every single resident in Koga has the ability to sit in the comfort of your own home on your own couch and enjoy the State of the Municipality uh, Address from the Mayor and hear what his vision and his plans are for the future. We are very excited to hear from the mayor today. It has been a very, very tough year. In fact, it might, have be, might be one of the toughest year, years that Koga has ever seen. Our uh, drought is severe. Our Koga dam is less than 6% full. And uh, with COVID, it has been extremely difficult for the municipality. Yet there are some really, really good stories. And that's why, Mayor, we are very excited to hear your plans for the future, the highs, the lows, and where we're going next. Everybody, please sit back and relax and enjoy um, yeah, listening to the Mayor. Please leave a comment in the comment box. Mayor, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Speaker, mayoral committee members and all councillors, the municipal manager, directors and officials, members of the uh, provincial legislature and party political representatives, representatives from sector departments and parastatals, our local businesses, communities and other stakeholder groups, members of the media, family and friends, and distinguished guests, good morning. Mulweni Huyamora. The year 2020 will probably go down in history as a year of disruption in Koga municipality. History will also, however, show the resilience of a people that refuse to bow down. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank all of you for joining me here today we re as we reflect on the state of the municipality. I would like to start off by acknowledging our honorable speaker all our councillors present, the accounting officer, Mr. Charles Duplessis, and his directors, all distinguished guests, members of the media, and all the public. Speaker, in the past financial year, our focus was on the development and expansion of our six organizational goals, which we believe are imperative to Koga to keep Koga moving forward. These goals tell the narrative of how we intend to entrench a system of good governance in Koga. This includes, of course, providing a capable state, being accountable to our clients, and adhering to the rule of law. In doing so, we place people at the center of everything we do. These organizational goals include keep Koga safe, keep Koga serviced, keep Koga clean, keep Koga green, keep Koga smart, and keep Koga growing. The past 12 months were filled with turbulence and possibly some, some triumphs as well with COVID-19 ravaging the lives and economies across the world. Koho was not immune to this devastation, but we stood firm against all adversity and we held the line. In terms of keeping Koha service, the effort to keep Koha service despite the challenges that was brought about by COVID-19 and the prolonged drought at the same time presented us with the most challenging trials we have ever faced in possibly the last few decades. But keeping Koga serviced was never optional. Over the past year, Koga has been, Koga opened uh, not one, but two state-of-the-art wastewater treatment works to unlock the development in Jumasdorp and St. Francis. Just three months after, the, after opening the first cutting-edge Kreisfontein wastewater treatment works, another state-of-the-art sewer plant has been completed in the Koga region. Built at a cost of 31 million rand, the Sea Vista wastewater treatment works at St. Francis Bay was opened at the end of February last year. The upgrade has more than doubled the plant's capacity, paving the way for unlocking the long-awaited Sivista 2000 RDP housing project. Local labor was also used exclusively, clocking in over 44,000 hours of work. In addition, about 10% of the contract value was subcontracted to exempted micro-enterprises. 
While the Potensi wastewater treatment works is nearing completion, the upgrade of the Quantum Zamo wastewater treatment works already have a contractor on site. The plant uh, needs urgent intervention after it was vandalized in 2016, and I would urge the administration to move with haste. I'm also pleased to report that several container ablution facilities was delivered to COHA and are key to our effort to eradicate the bucket system in our region. 20, about 20 containers have already been purchased and six have been delivered to residents in Thornio, Stovok in Hanke, and Markelas in Neumannsdorp. Chemical toilets were also installed at the new section of Donkeruk in Neumannsdorp. Furthermore, the operating expenditure in the adjustment budget has been increased by 9.6 million rand. That includes the hiring of additional tankers and jetting trucks at a cost of 5.5 million. Honorable Speaker, roads provide access to livelihoods and supports our local economic development. In other words, roads represent progress. It provides that visible buffer against economic decline. Koha is making considerable progress in resealing and repair of roads across our region, effectively reducing the half a billion rand backlog in road maintenance we inherited from the previous term. More than 25 million rand has been pumped into the resealing of roads since March 2020, while close to a million rand has been spent on gravel road upgrades since July 2020. Almost 23,800 and, sorry, almost 23,876 meters of roads were resealed from March 2020 to February 2021. And we hope to reseal a further 12,300 meters f over the next four months. Roads that recently received a new lease of, on life are access roads to Luri, Dolphin Street in, in Pelsres, and the access road to Ocean View that passes Jeffreys Bay Comprehensive High. Other roads that were resealed include Duplessis Street in Jumansdorp, A Street in Noorsekloof in Jeffreys Bay, and a section of Judy Street in Lurieville, Charlie Milan, Tier Street, and Stearman Street in Potensi were also resealed. Just recently, we did Chume Street in Hanke. Since declaring war on potholes in September 2018, Pothole repairs were ongoing. Pothole repairs is an ongoing operational priority. A total of 15,903 potholes were fixed over the last 12 months. There's been, that's more than 1,325 potholes per month. Over the last three years, almost 40,000 potholes were fixed. To demonstrate how serious we are about fixing our roads, an additional 20.5 million rand has been secured in our adjustment budget to continue our program of resealing to the end of June 2021. This will also have a positive effect on the cost of repairing portals in the future. However, we are not ignoring the fact that we have many roads in Koha that still needs to be fixed in terms of portals and therefore, we adjusted the budget with an additional 1.5 million rand for roads materials. Koha proudly boasts the first eco-friendly road in Africa, sparking national and international interest. This road took gold in the innovation category and silver in the eco-bold category uh, at the ninth annual Ecologic Awards. I would like to thank our roads team for their hard work and perseverance. Roads are the arteries that feed our economy, and it is imperative that leaders in local government comprehend this. Our collective response to the drought in Koha will always leave an indelible mark in the history of Koha. People will ask in 50 years' time, do you remember that time in Koha when we had a long drought and COVID-19 at the same time? My people also say then, wow, we sure had a good government to help us get through all of that. Therefore, Speaker, 
water security for the sake of current and future generations will remain a high priority on our agenda. The Koga Dam sits precariously at 6% capacity, with less than 3% of its water available for use. Over the last three years, we have put 151 million rand drought disaster funding to good use. The drought, however, aggravated by climate change, remains a grave concern. The level of the Impofu Dam, the biggest dam serving Jeffreys Bay, Yuma's Dorp and St. Francis Bay, stood only at 15% on Monday, and the smaller Churchill Dam just under 40%. We cannot allow nature to hold us back. The Jeffreys Bay water treatment plant is being upgraded to cater for additional bore water. The augmentation of the Kreisontain water supply will also see other water sources, for example, the springs in Yumasdorp connected to our system. Furthermore, the operating expenditure in the adjustment budget has been decreased by 9.6 has been increased by 9.6% to cater for the hiring of additional tankers. We are also securing some jetting trucks at a cost of 5.5 million. This is to ensure that when we do have breakages in water services, we are able to respond to that effectively. During lockdown, when vulnerable groups were most at risk to contract COVID-19, more than 200 water containers has been installed in rural areas and informal settlement uh, in partnership with the Department of Human Settlements. We urge all residents and businesses to keep using water only when necessary and to use as little as possible uh, when you do so. Please limit your usage to 50 liters per person per day. To further strengthen our capacity to deal with future water security, we are working closely with the German municipality Ilswell to augment our water supply to local communities. The projects being considered include rainwater harvesting, developing the springs, our natural springs at Kreisfontein in Jumasdorp, and interlinking our, our bulk water supply. A smart leak detection vehicle from Germany to Koga is expected around October 2021, and an engineer sponsored by GIZ specializing in water demand management will also assume duty around about the same time. May I say, a water security crisis is far from over, but neither is the extent of our resilience. One of our greatest privileges as Koga municipality has been to power up communities. The electrification of the 100 houses in Donkeruk, in Jumasdorp, was completed, completed earlier this year, and power is said to be installed in a further 200 houses in Kreisontein. Some 5.2 million rand have been budgeted for this purpose. The switch on brings a total number of sub-economic houses and sites to be electrified in Jumasdorp over the past four years to 797. This includes about 391 RDP houses built at Kreisontein, as well as a further 306 sites at Donkeruk. Six informal areas has also received electricity at a combined cost of 2.5 million rand. This includes Nortenrand, Pelsres, Police Camp, um, Hamtus Camp, Ibumnyameni, um, and a further 50 units at Ibumnyameni will also receive electricity soon. Koga is one of the few local municipalities in the Eastern Cape, if probably not the only one, to electrify informal settlements. As I speak, the electrification of the informal settlement of Stovolk in Hanke is happening now. Soon this community will have electricity for the first time ever, since ever it came into existence in the year 2000. With the national failure of ESCOM to pro provide us with consistent supply of energy, we realized that to save power, the municipality would have to play its part, as well as combat climate change at the same time. We are, we are busy replacing standard streetlights with energy efficient LED lights. More than 1,000 streetlights and floodlights 
have already been retrofitted in our area. The program, which we first rolled out in the year 2020, 2019, 2020, after the municipality's electrical services secured about 4 million rand from the National Department of Energy. Um, the funding also made provision for job creation, which enabled us to employ about six youth um, from the area for about three months. The municipality already secured a further uh, funding from its own budget uh, to purchase another 1,000 LED lights um, as per our commitment towards service excellence and cutting down on our carbon emissions to help save the planet by supporting green energy. To secure power supply, the electricity networks at Jeffreys Bay, Umas Dorps and Francis Bay have been upgraded and two generators have been added to make sure that we have backups. We improved our response time to call outs with the purchase of an additional five new LDVs for the municipality's electrical section, improving our services to communities. The ongoing upgrade at the 66 kV double circuit overhead line between Melcote substation and Humansdorp and the main intake uh, substation at Jeffreys Bay is on track. An amount of about 1.3 million rand was spent on the upgrade um, in the current financial year, and uh, while well, probably 1.8 million rand was spent in the previous financial year. Three additional IMAS lights have been installed in this financial year in Humansdorp to improve community safety and we will be procuring additional IMAS lights in the next financial year. The upgrade and refurbishment of the SAFRI substation in Humansdorp at a cost of about 4.5 million rand over the next three years are also on the cards. The municipality is furthermore in the process to request the Minister of Minerals and Energy to grant us permission to procure our own energy in the future. Public amenities such as parks, halls, sports fields and cemeteries play a central role when it comes to building social cohesion and create shared spaces. These are venues where our people come together to celebrate birthdays and weddings, to mourn the passing of loved ones and to watch out Africa's future sports stars in action. The municipality recently built about 30 play parks across the region most of the play parks were funded through our War Development Fund, allocated to ward councillors to initiate and support projects in their respective wards. The ablution facilities at Pelseras Beach Park um, in Jeffreys Bay were upgraded after it was vandalised last year, and extra bry stands were installed. The Kreisontein Civic Centre, Thornhill Clubhouse, the Quantum Zamo, Pelsras, Potensi, Vusimzi, Lando and Newton Hall, as well as the Tokyo Sikwale sports field, uh, were all upgraded to a very high standard. The, uh, the Jeffreys Bay and Yellowwood Caravan Park received a new lease on life, while the parks at Cabellos, Pelsras and Cape St. Francis Main Beach were also upgraded. Sea Place Cemetery was painted, the burglar bars and alarm system were installed, while BB Kiet Cemetery ablution facilities were also upgraded. SMMEs were employed to clean the cemeteries at Sea Place, Quantum Zamo, Arcadia, Humansdorp, and Luri, Hanke, and Potensi. Two new cemeteries are planned um, and to be constructed in Hanke soon. Koga's fleet section has been probably one of the biggest driving forces behind the municipality's service successes and subsequent progress. Since August 2016, they have overseen the procurement of 57 new vehicles, including eight TLBs, three firefighting um, trucks, and eight uh, LDVs, and also two chippers. They have furthermore repaired and refurbished about 115 vehicles. One of the latest refurbishments is an old Komatsu TLB and a tipper truck, two cherry pickers, and one old fire truck. They have also repaired and refurbished four sewer suction tankers and 
one old redundant refuse compactor that has been converted to a sanitation truck. The old Ford tractor that you see behind me on the screen is probably one of my favorite examples and a perfect illustra illustration of how Koga municipality has been making the impossible possible. They have been instrumental in getting the municipality back on track. Um, and I would like to thank each member of our fleet department uh, that went the extra mile uh, for Koga and its communities. In 2016, only 4% of our Koga fleet was in good working order. This meant that even if staff wanted to work, they would not be able to because they couldn't get to where they needed to be in order to fulfill our constitutional mandate. Now, probably in the first two years, uh, we got 96% of our fleet uh, back on the road delivering services, and that's an excellent turnaround time. The Koga keep the Keep Koga Clean campaign has been growing from strength to strength over the last four years. It forms a crucial part of our municipality's identity and character, as well as our people and how clean our environment is. Just weeks ago, we launched the Waste Management and Recycling Program in Yumansor. The program will initially see the employment of 20 women from these three wards working for three months. They will be trained on sustainable waste management and recycling and community-based education and effective communication. After training, the women will be involved in street cleaning in their wards, door-to-door uh, -door education and awareness programs, as well as sustainable waste management and recycling. They will also distribute bin liners for the separation of recycling materials at your home. Other activities include tree planting, as well as river and coastal cleaning. To date, a total of 21,493 wheelie bins have been distributed across the Koga region at no cost to our clients. Four refuse uh, compacted trucks have been, have been fitted with bin lifters uh, to enable our refuse collection teams to empty these wheelie, wheelie bins uh, quickly and efficiently. The idea is for bins to be to replace black bags, which will make it very easier for residents to keep their immediate surroundings clean. The launch of the Kota Max Kuhn initiative afforded Koga residents the opportunity to get rid of any unwanted items and waste they have at home that could not be put out for standard refuse collection. This included uh, building rubble, electronic waste, garden refuse, and even old furniture. All residents had to do to benefit from this opportunity was to place the unwanted goods um, and waste on the pavement outside for collection. I think this program was so successful that we're probably going to do this on an annual basis. Municipal work crews in conjunction with Community Works program regularly clear illegal dumping spots where our grass cutters and litter pickers have been doing a sterling job in keeping the verges and our towns tidy. To keep um, the town entrances and sidewalks clean and attractive, as well as to improve the maintenance of public facilities the municipality secured 20 industrial lawn mowers, 38 brush cutters, and 12 grass blowers. Two wood chippers have been added to our municipal fleet at a cost of just over 500,000 uh, to improve our bush and tree clearing operations. Furthermore, an additional 1.5 million rand have been made available in the adjustment budget for the hiring of landfill site equipment. Special mention must go to our beach teams who, once again, outdid themselves during the International Coastal Cleanup Day in September. I also wish to thank the many organizations, businesses, and individuals who, out of their own accord, have been helping us to keep Koga clean. These stakeholders include community organizations like Dorp van Drome, 
farmers from the Gamtus Valley, the Marina Martinique Homeowners Association, and businesses such as Woodlands Dairy, the Humanstar Co-op, Spa, Builded, and Buco. Closely linked to our efforts to keep Koga, closely linked to this uh, program is our efforts to keep Koga green as well. We entered into the 2019 Eastern Cape Greenest Municipality Awards for the first time, and we placed second in the Eastern Cape. The launch of the Keep Koga Green campaign followed conse consequently. The award recognized several initiatives introduced by the municipality aimed at promoting sustainable development to the benefit of all communities and the planet. These include proactive steps to reduce the amount of paper used by the municipality, tree planting drives, and the appointment of an official recycler. It, further, it furthermore includes Dolphin Beach ongoing success in the International Blue Flag Eco Program. Koha launched an innovative, sustainable urban food garden initiative at the end of last year, which will see about 30 illegal dumping sites being turned into community gardens of hope. One such garden in Pelsres, uh, one such garden is Pelsres Organic Vegetable Garden, which is one of the, which was a litter strewn illegal dumping site before. It now flourishes as a productive, clean, and sustainable vegetable garden. A small, a small food forest comprising of indigenous uh, fruit and nut trees are being planted to provide shelter from the wind and to create a biodiverse green habitat that will supply fresh fruit and nuts in the future. An organic compost pile will be used to produce organic garden cuttings from the area to provide organic compost um, material to improve soil fertility and soil structure. A worm farm also to be used uh, to produce uh, vermi compost from organic kitchens, organic kitchen waste from neighboring households to provide actively aerated compost tea. The site is also used for training and equipping the community to grow their own vegetable gardens at home. The garden will provide um, workshops and offer training and assistance to adjacent community members to implement their own vegetable gardens. The aim of the gardens is to provide valuable nutrition and sustainable livelihoods to local communities. We furthermore planted about 781 trees that will combat this year uh, to help combat climate change. Other current projects include the monitoring and management of the Seaqui estuary at Jeffreys Bay, strengthening the St. Francis Spit to prevent the sea from breaking through to the canals and the removal and rehabilitation of encroaching dunes at Oyster Bay. Keeping Koha safe, be it from disease, fire, accidents, or crime, has become increasingly important, and we therefore launched the first ever public safety summit in September of 2020. In February of 2021, a successful community safety workshop at Mentors Country Estate was held, which forms an integral part of the Keep Koha Safe campaign. On the back of a very success, successful safety plan workshop, we, are, we now have an integrated intelligence operations center in Humansdorp that was launched at the end of February. Hosted by retired General Major Roland de Vries, the workshop, which focused on preventing and combating crime through a collective approach, brought together safety and security experts from across our region, as well as all residents and business owners, to lay the foundation of an effective community safety plan. With the use of technology, including CCTV cameras, the Integrated Intelligence uh, Operations Center will direct and orchestrate the community safety plan on a 24-7 basis. The center will work in close collaboration with all relevant stakeholders, including the South African Police Service, 
agricultural and civic rights organizations, uh, municipal departments, law enforcement and emergency services, the NSRI, nature reserves, private security companies, businesses, schools and churches. In addition to the center, five community safety units will be established. Um, sector 10 will be in Jeffreys Bay, six, sector 20 in Humansdorp and Cape St. Francis, six, sector 30 in the Gamtus Valley, sector 40 in Oyster Bay and Chichikama and sector 50 in Carriero and Storms River. The establishment of community safety forums is also a high priority and will enable the municipality to dedicate funding and capacity to residents to join forces with law enforcement agencies to make our neighborhoods safe again. As part of the broader community safety initiatives, COHA formed a partnership with Hollard Insured and piloted an initiative at the end of last year to inspect all fire hydrants in our municipality. Nine young people have been temporarily recruited and trained to perform the work required. This included locating fire hydrants and recording their GPS coordinates, identifying the hydrants, uh, cleaning them, marking them and painting them and testing the water pressure. An added advantage uh, of, of the initiative is that it produced reliable data for water service departments and on areas requiring intervention as all faults were referred to this department. Some 50 residents from informal areas including Sivista were all armed with innovative new fire extinguishers. The fire extinguishers piloted um, and donated by, by the Port Elizabeth based company uh, Fire Killer is specifically designed to kill small fires, saturate them immediately uh, to prevent the flames from spreading. Two new fire trucks also strengthened the capacity of the fire department uh, to help keep Koga safe. Together with the Gamtus Irrigation Board and Working for Water, about 60 men and women from Humansdorp and St. Francis Bay cleared alien vegetation in crime hotspots. Clearing alien vegetation helps to preserve and restore groundwater supply, which is critical in this time of severe drought. It also improves the safety of people in the vicinity by reducing risk of fire, of fire breaking out and making it more difficult for criminals uh, to hide from, from intended victims or the police. I think I want to make a special mention of Councillor Jacques Alexander who took initiative this week uh, with his community members to start cleaning up themselves uh, uh, some bushy areas within Humansdorp. I think that's a clear example of what a councillor should do and our councillors should take initiative and be, always be connected to his community. In addition, it also provides work for thousands of residents who would otherwise be unable to put food on their family table. I would also like to applaud everyone who freely give of their time to help clear bushes and in doing so help to make a difference. The fire and disaster management uh, section attended about 280 fires and 116 accidents during 2020. They also intensified efforts to reduce fire risk in those areas prone to be to destructive blazes. These heroes should be applauded for their sterling work. The Koha Traffic Department remains committed to keeping road users safe. A total of 3,063 notices and fines were issued by the Traffic Department during 2020 and 13 arrests were made for drunken driving. More than 86 animals were impounded, impounded during 2020 for posing a threat to road users. A further 502 complaints were resolved. All fines were issued for transgressions ranging from trading illegally to illegally electri electrifying uh, electricity connections. Various road safety improvements have further made it possible uh, to include the installation of new speed dumps and street name boards. 
Pre-planning for the extension of Dana Road in Jeffreys Bay has also been started, including a traffic impact assessment and specialist environmental studies. The Dana Road extension will serve as an alternative route between Jeffreys Bay and Ashton Bay, which has become a necessity due to the increased safety concerns along the Ashton Bay Road. Pedestrians, including school children, traveling from to and from Ocean View must cross a busy road, increase, increasing the risk of someone being hit by a vehicle. The municipality has, in partnership with some businesses, put in place additional safety measures along the road, uh, such as fencing and pedestrian crossings. An alternative route, however, also, also help to lessen the amount of traffic and further lower the risk of accidents. I am particularly proud of our safety and security forces for managing the move of the illegal taxi rank from ShopRite to the designated taxi rank in Humansdorp. There was a long out, this was a long outstanding matter and I expected a war, but I received a bloodless transition. With respect to our traffic department, a special mention must go to Wom Yan, who, as he was fondly known, who passed away recently and served this department for about 30 years. May his soul rest in peace. A special word of thanks to the police, security companies, businesses, neighborhood watches, and other organizations who joined hands with us uh, to keep our residents and holiday makers safe throughout the year. The lifeguards um, worked over a wide area covering the coast from Oyster Bay uh, to Gamtus Valley also needs special mention. Transporting them um, transporting them to their designated areas and reaching emergencies uh, off the beaten track have in the past proved challenging and they did not have their own fleet. We have therefore purchased a new 4x4 bucky and a quad bike for them. A new 4x4 bucky has also been procured, procured for the disaster management section. Crime affects all our daily lives and hampers economic growth. It scares off investors and impacts negatively on our industries, such as tourism, on which our region relies heavily for job creation and security. Effectively addressing crime is therefore essential to improve the socioeconomic circumstances of our communities. I launched a project a few weeks ago in partnership with a co-op to build and maintain a safe walkway from Kwanuzamo to Nikomalan to keep our learners safe. Together we can make Koga municipality the safest in South Africa to live, work and play. A key contributor to the municipality's recent progress has been our determination to keep Koga smart. We have been actively looking for innovative ways to take Koga forward such as technology used at the Kreisfontein Wastewater Treatment Works and the using of plastic to build our eco-friendly road. Koha took a big step forward technology, te in terms of technology when the link service um, delivery app was introduced just more than three years ago. The app supported by the Koha call center has proven to be effect an effective link between the municipality and communities. More than 43,390 incidents were reported through the call center and link app from March 2020 to February 2021 alone. In addition, the call center is now fully equipped to handle account balances inquiries and to register ratepayers online. The call center also allowed us to harness the power of data on, serv on service delivery and to plan and respond effectively to breakdowns and preventative maintenance. Technology is also a game changer when it comes to opening economic opportunities for communities and the broader business sector. Jeffreys Bay has become the perfect digital nomad dest destination since the national COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown last year. 
remote work, uh, remote working has become the norm for many companies and individuals, and Jeffreys Bay is perfectly positioned to take advantage of this new normal. Not only does the town offer uh, top co-working hubs, but also has, but also boasts a, a major development of fiber with Telcom, Herotel, and Vodacom, all rolling out fiber uh, with other companies like Frogfood in, in the planning phase. Koga has become one of the first municipalities in the Eastern Cape to launch a virtual portal for the submission of building plans. Building plans uh, could continue despite COVID-19 lockdown restrictions. Over the past year alone, 325 plans for Jeffreys Bay were approved and 36 for Humansdorp. The COVID-19 lockdown uh, accelerated the, the digitalization of the municipality. Councillors and officials were trained in using virtual platforms for meetings. And I would like to congratulate all, the, all those involved in adapting so quickly to the new way of conducting business. All meetings are now done using media platforms such as tele and video conferencing. Councillors and officials have been trained in using applications to ensure the effective deliberation, decision making and oversight could take place despite COVID-19 lockdown restrictions. I would like to thank and congratulate both our councillors and officials for adapting so quickly to the new way of conducting business. We are also looking at rolling out our own online OVO platform, which will uh, form a hub uh, for all our systems. Keeping Koga growing in a sustainable way is non-negotiable. Providing the environment that stimulates economic growth is a core mandate of local government. We are in the process of developing an investment incentive policy to attract job creation investment into the local economy with a specific focus on making it a preferred business destination. The development of Jeffreys Bay and Newmansdorf CBD precinct plans are firmly underway. The spatial development plan that has been redone to bring it in line with our 30 year vision and our local economic development plan has been revised to ensure that we have an inclusive and growing economy. With all these plans in place, we form the foundation needed to attract national and foreign direct investment. The effect of COVID-19 related lockdowns has had a severe effect on our local economy. Koha is very dependent on seasonal tourism to support our economic growth. Municipalities who will be will best recover economically will be the ones who can grow the SMMEs as well as attract external investment. The TAFCO group, one of the oldest motor uh, groups in the Eastern Cape and Port Elizabeth, has recently moved into the Koga region. The branch is currently run remotely with plans to have a physical address soon. The reason for the establishment are, uh, within the Koga area is to create job opportunities and to deliver affordable vehicles uh, uh, and services to potential clients. The municipality further approved the launch of a first of its kind mobile biochar plant in Humansdorp earlier this year that will create on-site jobs as well as sustainable income for about 50 SMMEs. The plant will also enhance our water security while reversing land degradation. One blue come tree can consume about 500 liters of water per day. It is therefore imperative that we eradicate alien invasive vegetation in all our areas that is choking our rivers and decimating the water table, especially in areas affected by drought. Koga, in partnership with Sarabartman District Municipality and uh, the Department of Small Business Development hosted an SMME roadshow in Jeffreys Bay in October last year to present the district development model uh, with specific focus on SMME development. The model is a planning style aimed at aligning 
integrating and accelerating service delivery under one development plan per district. The aim is to utilize the model to implement the Department of Small Business uh, Developers mandate of developing entrepreneurs and small enterprises focusing on rural towns and townships. The platform was also used to table the township and rural entrepreneurship program. Uh, this program is set to uh, capacitate local economic development practitioners and community development workers in using SMME as a portal. It will also assist SMMEs who have challenges in, uh, with uh, connectivity and internet access to register. Considering the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 100 SMMEs took part in various workshops during the current financial year. More of these programs are to be rolled out further. As mentioned before, we are also in the process of appointing a service provider to develop a precinct plan for Jeffreys Bay and Humansdorf Central Business Districts. The two CBDs have been identified as strategic investment nodes uh, within the municipality's LED strategy and spatial development framework, the latter which is also under review. The idea is to revive the CBDs in partnership with role players and in doing so to increase business and employment opportunities. The development of a fresh produce and craft market at Jeffreys Bay and Hankey is also underway and will make it easier for entrepreneurs to connect with potential buyers. Big potential investors have um, started to approach Koga, uh, excited by the improvements that they've seen in our region and eager to play a role in growing our economy and opening up our job markets and job opportunities. Together, we can create and facilitate a conducive environment that builds inclusive local economies, sustainable employment, and to help eradicate poverty. Economic growth inevitably leads to an influx of people uh, and with it a greater demand for housing and rental opportunities. Year two, uh, the municipality has a role to play and has proven over the, the last three years that we are willing and able to do so. Housing projects were at a standstill for nearly 10 years, uh, and it has been heartening to see the incredible progress that has been made since the election uh, of this council. Koha is set to boast affordable social housing opportunities soon in Jeffreys Bay. Some 300 temporary and 20 permanent job opportunities will furthermore be created through this initiative. The social housing program was officially launched at the corner of Corral and Dolphin Street in Ocean View, Jeffreys Bay on Monday, the 22nd of February, 2021. Um, this will open rental opportunities for residents who earn between 1,500 and 15,000 Rand per month. With the construction of the first phase set to commence in the 2021-22 financial year, the target is to deliver about 1,500 rental units over the next five years. Koha is the only municipality in the Eastern Cape to have been selected for the social housing program uh, and, probably one, and only one of six municipalities in the country. The municipality has, furthermore, provided 172 Koha families with brand new RDP houses in Pelsres. The houses which are part of the Pelsres 220 RDP project um, is the first housing development under construction in the area for more than 10 years. We plan to build another 139 RDP houses in Humansdorp soon. The month thereafter, the month thereafter, history was made in the Gamtus Valley, where 10 local SMMEs have been employed by the municipality to build temporary shelters for beneficiaries for, of the upcoming uh, Anki RDP housing development. In November 2020, 110 residents received their title deeds for their houses. This brings our distribution of title deeds 
to 3,065 property owners. A total of 1,793 building plans with an estimated combined value of over 1.2 billion rand were approved from July 2017 to December 2020. Since March last year, the increase in submission, submission of building plans can be contributed to the fact that Jeffreys Bay became the perfect digital nomad destination. Despite the severe impact of COVID-19 um, uh, in terms of our local economy, and in particular our tourism industry, which has resulted in businesses like restaurants, accommodation establishments, and other uh, related activities suffering. Um, the budget, we budgeted for about 85% collection rate for the 2020-21 financial year. This, uh, to put this into perspective, we had about 96% collection rate in our draft budget for the specific financial year. It is pleasing to report that at the end of December 2020, and six months into the financial year, our collection rate was at 91%. This shows the resilience of our economy despite the challenges posed by COVID-19. We will be increasing the budget collection rate for the remainder of the financial year. This increase will facilitate um, the resealing of more roads in Koga, the installation of additional lights in, in areas prone to crime, and ensuring that we keep Koga clean. We thank the residents of Koga who have continued to pay their municipal bills despite the hardships brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are further more pleased to announce that the municipality once again received clean audits in our finances and have kept the, our ESCOM bill up to date despite the drop in collections during the financial year. Koga uh, remains in a stable financial position and most of our creditors are now paid within 30 days, unlike in the past when many of our local businesses did not want to deal with Koga municipality due to the fear of late payments and not getting paid at all. We still have a long way to go, but if we continue to stand together and, and look out for one, for one another, we will endure. Every problem has um, in it the seeds of its own solution. The problem of COVID-19 brought forth the seeds of a caring society that fought together against the spread of the virus. Worldwide, it will be remembered for one of the biggest international health crises in more than a, a century with COVID-19 pandemic ravaging lives and economies across the globe. Koha was not immune to the devastation, but we stood. Uh, but what stood out was how all sectors of our community took hands to help steer our region uh, and our people safely through the storm. It once again showed how resilient and caring the people of Koha are. The municipality played a critical role in keeping Koha uh, on course through the storm, taking uh, taking on far more than its mandate. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, in March last year and the subsequent uh, nationwide lockdown, Koha has plowed back close to 40 million rand back into communities. Apart from COVID-19 relief, the municipality has increased its adjustment budget by 31 million rand in September last year to improve service delivery in our region one of only a few municipalities able to do so, if possibly not the only one in the Eastern Cape. A further 25 million rand has been added to the 2021-22 budget to take service delivery even great, to even greater heights uh, in the new financial year. Relief measures included various payments relief to residents uh, affected by the pandemic. Re residents uh, could have applied uh, for reprieve uh, on interest charged on overdue accounts from the start of the lockdown in December uh, uh, until December 31st, 2020. 
All debt collection measures have also been stopped for six months and, and blocked electricity meters were unblocked for the same period. Other measures included a retrospective holiday reprieve from interest on outstanding accounts and a six-month payment arrangement. In addition to the payment relief measures, the municipality secured 201 water tanks to help vulnerable uh, communities combat COVID-19, uh, extra chemical toilets that were put in place, uh, taxi ranks, pickup points, and public facilities were all sanitized. A temporary homeless shelter had been established and some 15,000 food parcels were distribu distributed. This amounted to almost 200 tons of food at a cost of 4.5 million rand. I would like to thank our local business sector and community partners, as well as other spheres of government for taking hands with the municipality to make this possible. 110 disaster volunteers were deployed to help keep Koga community safe from COVID-19. Their role to, was to encourage residents to adhere to the basic safety precautions, uh, and this is still an ongoing program. Municipal law enforcement, security, and traffic officers have been working with SAPs and private security companies to ensure residents and businesses adhere to the lockdown regulations. Apart from COVID-19 initiatives, uh, new wheelchairs were donated to old age homes and individuals across Koga. Our sincere condolences goes and heartfelt sympathy goes to everyone who lost a family member or friend to COVID-19. I plan to build a plate of memorial with all their names engraved um, in their remembrance. May their souls rest in peace. I would like to thank the speaker, my mayoral committee, the municipal manager, and all municipal staff for their hard work and unwavering dedication this past year to get Koho one step closer in becoming the best municipality in the Eastern Cape, if not the best in South Africa. As we move towards the local government elections in 2021, our term and our term uh, in political office draws closer to an end. I want to reflect on the sentiment of former US President Barack Obama in saying that when we as a government part, as a governing party started this term, we did not come here to fear the future. We came here to shape it. Over the last four years, we turned the fortunes of this municipality that was on the brink of collapse into a place of hope and possibility where the pursuit of happiness and prosperity is real for everyone. We did this through grit and determination, by building trust and partnerships and placing value on the social contract that we formed with our people. Where there are, many, there are still many mountains that we need to climb and a virus that we still need to combat together, we are on track uh, and determined to deliver a system of good governance through service excellence. All the while keeping Koga safe, growing and smart for all residents, keeping our environment clean and green for generations to come and caring for our people from cradle to grave, from birth certificate to death certificate. The support from our business sector, our community-based groups, and individuals um, has also been nothing short of amazing and we are confident that with you by our side no obstacles will ever be too big for us to overcome and build a strong and united Koga. I want to leave you with these words as executive mayor, wherever you send me I will go, whatever you ask of me I will do, let it not be my will but the will of my people. Here is to Koga. The next chapter. I thank you. Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Executive Mayor. It was it's really inspiring to be part of your team 
and it's really exciting to work with you um, in building this vision of yours to make Koga the best municipality in South Africa. I do want to just thank, before we end this broadcast, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank Ronnie and his team at Lineout uh, for making this broadcast possible. I also want to thank uh, the manager in the office of the mayor uh, and her team for all their hard work. I want to thank all the councillors for their active participation in council and in actively being involved in the decisions that we make. Uh, the municipal manager and his team of directors and staff for working tirelessly and really, really hard to shape and, and uh, execute all the decisions that we as a council make. Then lastly, I want to thank you as residents uh, for keeping us accountable, for keeping us on our toes and for making sure that we deliver on the promises that we have made. Mayor, thank you very much for, for, your, um, for your dedication and your hard work in making sure that, that we steer the ship in the right direction. Until next year, thank you very much. This uh, meeting, this SOMA, is now over. Thank you.